Good evening, my monsters. Tonight I bring you another story from the No Sleep Reddit, titled, My Final Voyage Took Me to Hell, Never Again Will I Set Sail, written by Broken Ranch 7. Please enjoy. For years I have lived under the shadow of that fateful storm. I have been plagued with nightmares so relentlessly that not even medication can keep them silent. My days are no more pleasant as I constantly see in the shadows what shouldn't exist. This will be my last time writing. My health is failing and I grow weak. I do not believe I shall last the night. It all started as any normal voyage does. The sounds of men shouting commands. The creaking of ropes and timber. The smell of the sea. And the song of gulls. Our job was to deliver a shipment of sugar and grain to the New England colonies. Once the cargo was secured, we gathered and prayed for a calm sea. We then boarded the gifted goose, unfurled the sails, and pulled out of the docks. The first few days provided the calm seas and brightly lit nights. Our spirits were high as we rejoiced in the freedom of the open sea. We sang songs while we worked and feasted on fish that we pulled from the water. Our captain even mentioned a bonus for every man on our return to New York. About two days before we were set to arrive in New England, the wind completely stopped. We sat drifting in glass smooth waters. The older sailors said prayers to ward off the bad omens and warned of potential storms. We passed the time by scrubbing and inspecting the ship. At one point, we all turned our heads as we heard the sails snap taunt with a breeze, but it lasted no more than a minute. That night I sat out on the dock, smoking my pipe and gazing out at the dark ocean. The night was so clear that the stars reflected beautifully on the calm water. The horizon blended so perfectly that I couldn't tell where the sky ended and the earth began. It was a breathtaking moment of wonder for me. I was so captivated by the sight that I never heard the quartermaster walk up behind me. He told me to finish my pipe and catch some sleep. I laid in my hammock still contemplating the beauty of it all. Around me the other men snored or whispered various conversations. I slowly drifted off to sleep willing myself to dream of a star-filled night. My dreams were not pleasant, though. My dreams were filled with blood-red seas and decapitated heads screaming in agony as they bobbed up and down with the waves. I awoke soaked in sweat and breathing hard, my heart pounding. Starlight illuminated the sleeping quarters. I heard a gurgling noise and looked to see a man holding his torn throat. Staring at me with panicked eyes, I moved to help him, but he expired as soon as I grabbed him. I quickly grabbed my knife and glanced around frantically, fearing his murderer would soon set upon me next. I heard shouting from the deck and the sounds of several men moving around with purpose. I could feel the ship rocking in the waves as I moved slowly towards the stairs, my knife held defensively. I climbed the stairs and stepped foot into a new hill. My eyes gazed upon the bodies of three men, hanging from the main mast with ravaged bodies. I then saw the captain. I yelled to him about the murdered man below deck. He responded by telling me that he was aware of a killer on the ship and that we had a massive storm that was about to descend upon us. Men moved quickly to lower the bodies and prepare for the storm. I jumped right in and assisted in lashing things down and securing the ropes. Off to the west, the star-filled sky ended in rolling darkness. Thunder rolled across the distance like the sound of cannons firing. The ship started rocking harder as the wind picked up. The order was given for all hands to be on deck and to watch out for the evil bastard who was killing us off. We were going to try and outrun the storm, while trying to survive the sick bastard. The sails strained with the force of the wind as we started moving abnormally fast. 
The storm chased after us with tremendous roars of thunder and flashes of lightning. At first, I thought we had a chance of outrunning the dangerous sea, but that was short-lived. The wind suddenly changed direction and began blowing towards the storm. Men gasped in disbelief at the impossibility of it. The wind was sending us into the approaching storm. Wind and rain began to lash at us almost immediately. Brilliant flashes of light tore at the sky and the ship shook with the powerful roars of the beast that was setting on us. I held on to a rope for dear life, doing my best to remain aware of the men around myself, knowing that one of them was likely to kill me. The gifted goose bucked and swayed, the hull groaned, and one of the smaller sails tore free and flew into the night. Men hurried to roll its opposite up in an attempt to balance the wind's pull of the vessel. A flash of light allowed to briefly see the carved figurehead spearing into a large wave, the dark water crashing onto the deck and knocking a man overboard. No one attempted to rescue the lost sailor. It was already too late for him. I held down for dear life as more waves crashed onto the deck. The assault came from all directions, a wave from starboard and another from port. I could no longer tell if we were even moving as the ship battled the sea. Lightning clawed at the clouds and I glimpsed the captain screaming orders into the wind and holding the wheel with all of his strength. Blood ran from cuts on his arms and a body lay slumped against the railing. The captain's sword stuck through his back. The captain's eyes were wide in fear and his face was deathly pale. I heard a faint rumbling and turned to look ahead. Lightning exposed the massive wave towering above us. I screamed as it slammed into us and broke the ship. Lightning danced around us endlessly as the masts came together above me and we sank into the depths. The first thing I felt was cold agony as the ship bobbed up and down in the absolute darkness. My face was pressed against something slick and hard. Slowly, I began to regain awareness of my limbs bobbing in the water. My mouth as full of salt water. Spitting the water out, I inhaled the fresh air and opened my eyes. I was on a rocky outcrop, but I knew not where. I painfully climbed up the jagged beach, willing the numbness from my hands. I could see pieces of wood and cargo washed ashore. A light slowly rotated above me from a dark lighthouse. Lightning flashed from the retreating storm, the light shining through the building's windows. I stumbled as quickly as my shaky legs would allow me to move. As soon as I made it to the door, I started pounding and yelling. I received no response from my attempt to wake the keeper. I found the door to be unlocked and took the liberty of allowing myself in. To my utter horror, I found the keeper hanging from a rope in the lighthouse stairway. A puddle of piss was splattered on the floor below him, and his face was etched with terror. I closed the lighthouse door and left him alone. I found a bedroom and helped myself to dry clothes and a coat. I grabbed a lantern and went out to look for other survivors. I found none. I returned to the house and started a fire in the wood burner. I basked in the warmth and made myself a quick meal out of some canned meat and bread I found in the kitchen. I searched for a backpack and oil for the lantern. As I searched for useful provisions, I passed by the stairway door. It was open. Lightning flashed and I could see the noose with nobody hanging from it. A cold fear gripped my stomach and I started to cautiously make my way out of the house. I found him in the kitchen, sitting at the table. His head laid at a wrong angle and my captain's sword was stuck in his chest. A fresh puddle of piss sat steaming between his feet. I screamed and ran past the dead lighthouse keeper and into the night. I continued to run along the path. I could see the lights of a village ahead on the other side of some woods. I could see the storm receding in the distance maintaining its hellish lightning show. 
The evil light show aided me as I entered the dark wood. I thought I heard whispers among the creaking of tree limbs in the wind. I saw movement all around me as the timber flashed with the light. I didn't slow down as I continued through the trees. I was in full panic. Finally, I found myself delivered from the dark forest and looking at the edge of a village. The chapel stood strong and white on a hill above the town proper. What looked to be a tavern promised warmth and safety. The tavern was empty. Lanterns burned away the darkness and cooling food sat out on several tables. I backed out slowly, fear threatening to take control once again as my heart faced. I cautiously made my way down the street and noticed that everyone seemed to be up at the church, certainly praying for the Lord's protection from the evil. I slowly followed the path up the hill and to the church. Through the windows, I could see a large congregation sitting in the pews. A priest stood behind the podium waving his hands with urgency. I carefully entered the church. Fresh thunder shook the windows as I crossed the threshold. The priest looked at me without slowing down his speech. I slowly moved further into the large room until I stood even with the last row of pews. The nearest villager to both my left and right turned in unison to look at me. My blood turned to ice in my veins when I saw that their eyes were cut out. They both smiled at me, and I screamed hard enough I could taste blood on my lips. Hands grabbed my shoulders and pulled me backward. As I fell, I saw every person in that room stand and make their way towards me. At some point, I blacked out. I woke up to the gentle rocking of a train. I was laying in a bed in a private cabin. A strange pain spread across my chest as I moved to sit up. Undoing my shirt, I found an awful and ancient looking symbol carved into my flesh. At that point, I cried. The train finally made its way back to New York, and I finally made it home. I walked into the comfort of my small home and stopped dead in my tracks. My heart filled with dread as I stared at my captain's sword stuck into my kitchen table dripping with fresh blood.